Imagine it's a sweltering summer day. You place a bucket of ice in the middle of your room. As that ice melts, it absorbs heat from the air, and the temperature begins to drop. This is the primitive ancestor of air conditioning, but it's slow. To speed things up, you aim an electric fan at the bucket. The airflow accelerates the melting, and suddenly, the room feels much cooler. You have to keep replacing the ice. It's exhausting. So, being the innovator you are, you decide to replace the ice with a specialized refrigerant. Like Freon, while it's a gas at room temperature, it turns into a liquid when pressurized. You build a closed loop system of copper coils. When the liquid refrigerant flows through the indoor coils, it's allowed to evaporate. This phase change from liquid to gas requires energy, so it steals heat from your room, leaving the air chilled. But now you have a hot gas. To reuse it, you need to turn it back into a liquid. You install a compressor. It squeezes the gas, causing its temperature to spike to nearly 180 degrees. To cool it down, you pump it through a second set of coils outside your house and blast it with a fan. This is the condenser. As the heat escapes into the outside air, the high-pressure gas cools and condenses back into a liquid. But there's one final hurdle. The liquid is still too warm to cool your room. So, you install an expansion valve. As the liquid passes through this tiny opening, the pressure drops instantly, and the temperature plummets. It's now freezing cold and ready to head back indoors to start the cycle all over again. Add a few sensors for precision and a blower fan to distribute the air. And you've done it. You haven't just beat the heat. You've mastered the laws of thermodynamics. Congratulations. You've just invented the air conditioner.